Hello, YouTube! I know I'm uh, a little bit early here, and that's because I just want to test out the old stream. I'm on a, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm on a really old laptop, and I'm running a whole uh, doodad on it to get the, you know, like a webcam and all of that jazz. And I've no idea if any of this damn stuff works. Uh, and if you're, I'm even audible to you. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, it's a 1080 lap, uh, cap, uh, let's start again. It's a 1080 web, uh, webcam, and it's being downscaled to 30 uh, frames per second and set 720p to stream. The microphone is actually built into it. It's one of those Logitech uh, thingies. And the laptop is a Lenovo Yoga, the original Lenovo Yoga, which I think is maybe an i3 or an i5. So hopefully it's okay. I mean, I'm looking at the stream, sorry, the recording uh, capture on OBS, and it's looking a little choppy on that. So I'm going to try to try to be a bit slower than usual when, when I'm waving my hands around. So before I begin, though, let's have a little update of where I am in some projects. Um, Dean, I don't know if you're watching, Dean. You might be, you might not. Um, if not, you can watch it in the stream, like, you know, the recording. Yeah, but thank you so much for lending me the WrestleMania. And I know it's been with me a while and I haven't done anything with it. But uh, I will be getting back to my NES chassis project soon enough. And I'll be able to actually test it now that you've sent me that game. Hopefully, there'll be some life in this beastie and we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. Maybe put it in a box or something. That's a good one. And there's another thing behind me, but I'm not going to move my camera to show you. I have a whole virtual, uh, the Nintendo Virtual Boy, which is a bit of fun. We're going to be getting that working. And I was at the Retro Man Caves Cave. And by the way, I do apologize here for this um, white uh, area here. I can't adjust the webcam to, uh, you know, to compensate for the back office lights. It really is not the same. We, we're talking about a sort of two, a 150 pound webcam versus a 3000 pound camera body. It's not going to do the same. So that Retro Man Caves uh, cave, his lair uh, yesterday, cave dweller. And uh, I found this on the shelf and asked him if I could have it. And he goes, yeah. Um, so I took it away because it doesn't have a wire. We'll be probably midiing this up if the micro switches are intact. <laughs> I said midiing, USB. I'm, uh, hang on. Let me have a coffee. I was at the old cave yesterday till so I got home around 2 a.m. Mm. And that's my first coffee of the day. Let's get the brain engaged. So this will be USB'd up. But what will be nice about this, at least I can set two different buttons for the fires because, of course, they're always a single fire button on the actual device. So put that one away. And the other thing is this uh, that he kindly... Uh, well, he Someone sent it to him to fix, and I think he wasn't sure about it, so he sent it on to me. Yeah, let me see. Does Andrew have a go at this? It's had the screws removed, and if you read the box, someone said stopped working after firmware upgrade, and it looks like it's a single channel DSO, which is kind of cute, isn't it? So it's a nice, cute package. And I, I always use, I'm just going to pull it off the shelf here, one of these things. And these can be a little, these are great, by the way, if you don't have a DSO and you can get them quite cheap, these mini DSOs, and you can hack the firmwares and stuff. This is a DS203, uh, which is a four channel one. Um, but they, they can be kind of cumbersome with the interface because you're getting a whole digital storage scope that you'd have on the shelf that might cost you sort of two, two grand and you're trying to fit it in something like this. So you're always going to have a compromise on the UI. And unfortunately, that compromise for me makes it really only suitable for use in the car. But I think this could be better for the car because it's just a single channel and you've got your AC uh, DC coupling there. It's, it's really, you know, it's almost like a, a multimeter in terms of its simplicity. So it'd be nice to see if we can get that working. So if uh, any of you be so kind as to put the shout out onto the Twitter and the Facebooks and the um, Discords of this world, we'll probably begin that with some kits. And I do have some. They've come from China. So you might have seen this in a tweet. We've got the Digital Tube, SCM Digital Tube Calculator DIY kits. And I'm, let's do a little test on the old camera to see if you can actually read any of this if I hold it up. Yeah, it looks like you sort of can there. Um, so this is the SEM Digital Tube Calculator DIY Kits one of $3.96 and the XR2206 Signal Function Generator Kit. And I haven't looked on Twitter and I dare not touch my laptop. Now it seems to be working. 
uh, on the, the poll. Last time I checked, the poll was saying we were winning on the signal gen. Um, and the, the calculator was obviously a, a, it's a coming up second. I've noticed now, by the way, this whole camera seems to have got a rolling shut. It's rolling shutters, knickers and a twist. So let me have just one quick uh, go on that. And uh, if any of you have one or can recommend one, I think um, I really need to get a decent long length USB wire because then I can sort of run my main PC. And although I'll still be using this webcam, it will be an awful lot faster. Yeah, I'm just setting. I'm trying to get rid of that rolling shutter, which is driving me nuts. And I'm sure it's driving you nuts. And uh, it's just not having it. Hmm. There we go. Turn off your LED lights. No problem. Turn them back on. Ah. Okay, two seconds, guys. I'm just going to grab a battery powered camera. Battery powered camera light. Let's see. Let's see if we can do do something with this no it's all a bit it's getting all a bit peak tong anyway so we've got the two kits by the way is is this okay it's i know you're going to get a shadow from me though and it's not very bright but if, if you're happy with that i can continue we can we can try turning the light on again in a bit see if it works out so i'm just going to look in the chat so thank you everybody electron ash andrew dalton uh renee um there was a few other names there popped up sorry i've missed you so you've got the signal generator and you've got the um, calculator. I don't know which one you want to go first. I'm going to go, should we go for signal gen? Because we did calculator not too long ago. Amazon's own USB 3 extender cables. Thank you, Fairfight14. I will certainly look into those. Those sound just the ticket for me. And what I really need to do, I need to find someone who is a, a camera photographer expert. Camera photography, so I just made up. And... I have, I'm telling you what I'm using, I'm using Panasonic GH series cameras. If there's a way I can capture the HDMI output of those cameras directly in without a really super expensive capture solution, I would be most keen on hearing how to do that because that would be, what's that say? Ah, Electron Ash says, if it's a Logitech, you can usually disable the right light thing and or adjust the shutter to stop strobing well we'll have a little quick play of this um we can afford a couple of seconds i have a feeling we're going to be here for a while if we're going to be building some couple of kits so <laughs> let's turn the light on again and there's the old strobing and it's the power line anti-frequency actually when i had that set earlier because it, it, it defaulted to 60 um it actually worked super well when i set it to 50 but i don't know why it just uh it's unhappy about the whole thing now Brightness, contrast, U, saturation. There's not really too much, I'm afraid. Low light compensation. Maybe that's what we need. No. It's all a bit, a bit of a disaster. Let's leave it like that, shall we? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just turn up the uh, play with the white balancer thing. I think, I think it's a little bit too, uh, too on the, uh, looking a bit too down. There we go. Let's go back to that. So we've got two parts of this kit. You've got the circuitry bits, the uh, components there. And on the right here, you've got the actual case. It does come with a case, which is quite cute. A lot of things are coming with these laser cut cases, which I'm not sure I entirely like because they're a pain in the ass to put together. But they are quite neat in terms of at least you've got a case. So if you've gone through the effort and you want to actually use the thing you've made, you've got some chance of that. So this is the, it seems to be using a standard IC and it's the XR2206 IC. Let's have a quick play of that, get all the bits out. So those are the screws you're gonna need for the actual case. We might even not bother with the case today because the case is just purely busy work. It's just taking off the, uh, the actual laser cut stencil stuff and just putting it together. It's really not worth it. Now look, this one actually comes with few sets of knobs which is good never never get the knobs on those which always seems to make it a little bit less professional the soldering line has gone on now you'll be pleased to know and we've got few resistors and you know how i love resistors but i'm just gonna sort these out real quick so we've only got we've got three kinds of thing it's not too many though isn't it fortunately and i'm just gonna use my multimeter here 
<laughs> Electron Ash, you uh, you certainly seem to be enjoying your cider last night. 0.323k. Put that there. That's a 330 ohm and a... Still thinking about it, a 1.3 meg. Yeah, I'm not seeing a 1.3 meg in our list of parts here. So let's come back to that one. In fact, why well, rely on one source here? We've got our little doodad here. We'll take out those test probes. If you haven't got one of these, by the way, get one. They're great. I think they're about five pounds on the uh, internet. What? Oh, read the instructions though. Let's get that on. Testing, testing, test. What the frig is going on with this? Uh, is it possible I've actually got a faulty resistor? That is bonkers. So remember we put this in the multimeter, it's giving us a meg range on that. Um, it does look like we've got a faulty resistor. And if you remember on the last calculator kit, we had a whole um, PNP transistor supplied where it should have been an NPN, which does screw you up. Aha! So it's, a, it's saying this one's a 1K. Now if you're at home, if you're playing along, Hello, uh, Peter. Thank you, Nostalgia Nerd, for joining Floating Fat Man. Woo -hoo, that's a good name. Reminds me of the chap from Dune. Top Notch. Top Notch. I like that. Great name. Right, let's have a look at this colour. It looks like it's brown, black, black, brown, brown. So have a guess if you want. Brown, black, black, brown, brown. So I'm just going to go straight into actually putting some parts down. I'm going to start, of course, with the resistors being the most fiddly and the most pain in the arsey. So I've just un unhinged our three, which are the 5.1Ks. Let's see if we can see where our 5.1Ks go. R3, R5, and R6. So R3, R5, those two there, and R6. Not too bad at all. Now, I'm going to use something different. Brian Power Crazy did send me a 3D printed gadget last time. And uh, I think I'm going to need to use one of these. Because he did. He, if you haven't got one, apparently it's something on Thingiverse you can make. And it is a resistor leg benderer. So, oh, Brian, it is good. Thank you ever so much. That does the that does the trick for me. Although I could have got that one a little bit tighter. No worries. Let's just let's get on with the bending. We're all bending here today. Floating fat man, you're loving it so far. Thank you, sir. Um, that pl pleases me immensely. What doesn't please me though is the resistor I had. Remember there's three resistors? What have I done with the third one? Is that it or is that now a random resistor? Who knows? I'm just gonna solder these ones on while I kind of worry worry to myself now which, which resistor was which. Now the resistor bender didn't quite bend these as tight as I'd have quite liked. So I should have, maybe I'll 3D print one that's a little bit smaller, but it's not to worry. Now do you remember Sinclair's uh, used to have the resistors on their ends? That's something you really don't see that often, thank gosh. Right, let's get that one in, that one in, that one in, that one in. Now, I'm kind of hoping it was this resistor here was the one I flung across the room. Side cutters time, let's get ourselves. Oh, should we get a fresh set of side cutters, brand new? I think that would be a, a treat today. Uh, we have a brand new fresh set, let's see. Come on, is the old strobing gone? No, still there. Anyway, these are the micro cutting pliers from Pro's Kit, which I think Pro's Kit is a CPC brand, so we'll be reviewing these today. Gosh, they're actually really quite beefy. What have they got? They've got. Now I'm gonna have to show this on a, a back office video. I think if I can get some, let me see if I can get some light on this. You guys will be interested in this at home, those you tooly, tooly types. But I don't know if you can see that, but it's got on the blade an extra thing. I don't know what that does. It's like an extra blade on the blade. And there's a patent pending thing for that metal shield on there. Don't know what it does. Let's try it. Maybe it'll hold onto the leg when you snip it off. I think that could be what it is. It does, it's a, it's a, it's a holder on it. It holds onto the bit that you've just snipped off. Love it, love it. That is so handy, look. See it right there holding on? Pro's kit plier. I'm going to get that box out of the bin. Part number time. It's a, oh, it's from Farnell. It's a 1135901. A 
brilliant. Oh. I don't know if they still have that. That's a very old, um, a very old uh, purchase that I've not used for, you know, not got out of the box, but that's fine. New old stock. I'm sure they still make those. Just going to double check now our resistors. That's our five, um, 5k, I believe. Let's just check this one again. Is a 5k? It is. It's still, a, it's still a 5k. It hasn't deteriorated. Now I'm going to try this other end. This is the finest end on Brian's tool. I'm not sure why you need. To, oh, you know, it has a lot of delineations here actually for all the different sizes of resistors. Good. I do prefer surface mount if I can. So signal generators. I don't know if any of you have used a signal generator. I'm sure. I'm sure you have. Um, basically, the purpose of a signal generator is to generate a uh, signal and it generate a waveform of known values and parameters. So you'd use those for testing. There we go. Uh, so you can have a, a square wave or a sine wave or whatever, and you can normally play with your knobs and uh, adjust those accordingly. Now we've got our last two resistors. We've got one that we think is probably faulty and the other, which we don't know. Let's see if we can get a reading out of something that makes sense. 300K we've got here, a three, probably this 330, which is an R4. And then we've got our other one, which was saying it's a, a mega, mega, mega resistor. Oh. Well, actually it's coming in at 1K. So I think that's good. That's what we should have. R1 is 1K. So we'll bend R1 first. Let's go in order. And I'm looking at the uh, this diagram here to see where R1 is. It's not too bad, right there. We'll plot that one right in there. And then uh, after I get these two in, I'm just gonna have a little sip of my coffee and have a read of the old chat things. And uh, I do apologise if uh, anything if anything's interesting has sort of come up on the chat and it's gone off the top of the screen. I'm not sure my laptop is capable of actually operating the mouse and streaming it's it really is that on the edge right now but if anyone's if anyone could uh, is collating any of the more interesting questions maybe i need to open up the old discord channel in fact i think i'll just do that we could have uh, someone on the discord could be the moderator for me and uh, just read out some questions or something like oh it'd be less lonely won't it less lonely let me just i'm just going to double check over here if i've got the old discord running i do indeed um, Discord button. I'm going to go my put on myself on the general audio channel. So there. So anybody on the Discord, you can try joining it uh, and uh, feel free to talk. And maybe just maybe we might hear you when you when you do. Right. So we got our resistors in, and we're going to put in our IC carrying where's that IC we don't want to lose that these are really quite fun to put in by the way if you if you haven't they're uh, they're nice and simple and they are better than actually just soldering straight in if you're if you're always worried about these kits and sometimes those ICs can be a bit uh, dicky um, make sure you get one of these in and this isn't a great one by the way this is just a flat one it's made out of flat pressed metal there's the sort of terminals in here. You can get these rolled pin terminals, which are gorgeous. They're, they're, they're the expensive ones. So if you ever see them and you see a picture of two, and they look kind of similar, one's more expensive, look closely at the things that the pins go into because you might that might be revealed to you why there's a difference in the in the quality. I did promise actually to look over over at the chat, didn't I? Nice pliers, Robert Taylor says. I think I'd miss the cut leads. All over. Yeah, it's... Um, I quite like the I like to I like the cut leads. I don't miss them all over the place, but I'd like I like the idea of collating them so I can put them in a pot for later because you always need them for jumpers on your breadboards, don't you? I'm just uh, soldering this on. There we go. That's that one. And uh, Electro says nobody home soon might force myself to attempt a YouTube video. Well, why not? Indeed. If uh, I'm like the uh, the scat man, if the scat man can do it, then so can you. And you know, I'm barely coherent, especially at this time of the day. And uh, I think you were worried about coherency in your streams. I think you've probably got less of an issue than I'll have. So just go ahead, give it a go, and you'll be okay. Uh, 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 Retro Man Cave is talking about big knobs. He uh, he's having an obsession with big knobs recently. Um, and uh, I'm, I've got an obsession with the uh, lack of uh, quality D-pad, and uh, I think I think that might be misinterpreted by Neil, of me confused about not getting enough enough 
D button action on my controllers. So we've got a few more bits now added. Electromagnetic sub device. Some devices were worth upwards of 50k. Yeah, people don't care when it's not their stuff, basically. That's why. And if they break it, it's like, oh well, shrug. Electron Ash is asking for my soldering iron. Does have a chiseled end? Um, yeah, I've got a chiseled end. It's actually in the cupboard. I don't use it. This is the same tip I've been using for 10 years. I'm not going to change it now. Till it, till it burns itself apart, then I'll probably ever have to change it. So we're going to put in some capacitors here. These are sort of just standard. I don't know what you call them, really. The little ceramic-y things. They all just, just work. You need people uh, on the stream who uh, know what they're doing. Electron Ash will be able to correct me on the correct chemistry of these uh, capacitors but I would just chuck in. In fact one of my recent videos I didn't even realize that you can get capacitors with re like resistor type color bands for their value so I thought they were resistors um, even though it said capacitor on the bit the, the board um, some there was a bit of a debate actually I did ask before I just did that and uh, people thought it was misprinted silk screen um, which it clearly wasn't but it doesn't matter. In fact, sometimes some of those minor components, you know, it didn't actually affect that. That was on the old Sony hit bit. Now I'm actually soldering these from the top because if I turn this around, they're going to just drop out. So I'm just doing a tack solder from the top. And uh, because they're through hole plated, that should just hold them in nicely. I mean, technically that side is soldered in anyway. That, that, that's actually OK now, but I'm going to turn it around anyway. It's fine. Perfect. Shouldn't do the other side and then go do the tack side again and you'll be good. Now I can't zoom in unfortunately, that's kind of the uh, the one issue of this whole uh, technology. I'm noticing it's very quiet on Discord, I don't know if anybody's having a go. If anybody is having a go on the Discord, feel free to uh, shout if it's not working. I believe it's working. Oh, oh, oh who's that? Who's that? It's Mr Dalton. Oh, that's Andrew Dalton and... Um, just say testing one, two, three, and I'll look at the VU meters and I can tell you if you're actually streaming. Testing one, two, three. You are streaming, sir. Well done. Well, that's that's a great boon now. I mean, do you, would you like to relay some questions for me? I certainly will. I certainly will. Uh, Electron Ash, I'm not sure you really asked this. Does that soldering iron have at least some sort of a chiseled end? It, uh, as I, I, I did mention that briefly and say, it, you no, know, okay. this one doesn't, but you can obtain them. But if he's got, uh, if he wants to say, uh, you know, explain why he'd prefer me to use a chiseled end, I would be interested in hearing that. Maybe it's uh, of benefit to me. There we go. Okay, yeah. okay, Ash. There we go. Just drop that in, Ash, when you uh, when you've got a second. Is there a, is there any more, Andrew? Uh, I'm just going through. Um... Not many of our Mash is talking to Fair Fight uh, that he's got a faulty BBCB, but uh, I'm sure he's the man to get that working again. <laughs> so we've got our uh, resident fix it though, uh, Mr. Rob, and oh, yes. uh, um, I, I think now uh, I, he, he's going to be the one I'll probably pick the most brains of if I get a BBC issue. But is, is he happy? to take on such responsibility as being a BBC expert. Well, miss, miss, you're a friend of Mr. Rob Taylor, I'm assuming. Miss, yes. Yes, he, uh, he he loves taking things apart and fixing them and fiddling them, and hence why my wife is dropping more s supplies off when she goes to bingo with his wife uh, oh. imminently to uh, carry on repairs on my master. So that's, if you have, I mean, that sounds quite a good, um, not just sort of, BBC micro working relationship, but you've actually got wives involved here, so they're on board with the program. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, they go to bingo, and we get to play the retro gear. Awesome. And, and but you don't go to bingo yourself. Have you ever been to bingo yourself? Not really. No, it's, I'm not ninety years old and a pensioner. Anything, you know. but, not uh, not yet, wife, anyway. Not yet, anyway. But my wife did tell me there's this whole subculture of like hardcore bingo player women and if anyone makes any noise while the games are going on it's like everyone turns and howls it's like someone setting a banshee off wow it's proper hardcore i suspect if we went to a bingo we would be really surprised at how modern and amazing it is it's probably like a kind of a margate style norbreck uh arcade 
lights, okay. flashing lights, okay. electronics. Um, she said as well, there's, a, there's something that like, it may be worth going on. Just there's, there's an auto bingo thing that they do as well, where they you can buy your cards and then as the numbers come out, it automatically checks them. So that's it's, that's a bit like buying online lotto scratch cards, isn't it? I think so. I think so. It it's just, just it, it takes the fun out of the game. Yeah, I kind of think there's a slight. It's not only just chance, but there's a slight skill element in that. If you don't pay attention, you won't get your bingo. Mm. All right, so, so I've got... Ash wants to know what's the name of the Discord live stream thingy. Okay, I will give you. I will try and paste you a link on Twitter or in the chat to the uh, to Andrew's Discord channel. Yes, I, I I was speaking to Neil about that, and again, I think Neil's recording today, so he might not be still be in the stream, but. Um... He's got a very, he's just made his totally public and I sort of resisted from that because I'm not in there all the time. Mm. Um, but maybe, and then there's that moderation issue. But I, th I think actually you're, you're a moderator now, Andrew. Are you on the Discord? Someone oh, yeah. is. I am. Re uh, and uh, Rene is. So I'm an admin for uh, the excellent Slopes Game Room. Ah. A quick question for out there. I've got the uh, symbol here for the capacitor. You've got one side which is filled, shaded, and one side that isn't. Can anybody shout out and tell me which is the negative and which is the positive? I'm going to make a note on the back office board right here. I'm going to draw this so I know for future reference. So we've got that going on. Capacitor. How do you spell? I, I can't spell capacitor. C A P A C I T O R. There we go. Capacitor. So, uh, yes, hi, Yoshi Knuckles. Thanks for joining the stream. This is live, a live kit build. And, Yoshi, which part of the capacitor is positive and which part is negative? I could look it up, um, but I kind of feel let's give that little, little shout out. Field is negative. I'm guessing you mean filled is negative. So, you, so Camelas is saying this part is negative. Are there any other takers? I'm not saying uh, Camelas is wrong or right. I just don't know. But I'm saying I'm not sure what field means. It could be a typo. Ah, the shaded part is grounded. So this is negative. And this side, I'm going to put it in the middle. You can't get wrong. Positive. Marvellous. And we have here, of course, should update the board, long leg positive. Now I'm going to get the old board re-laser cut, another one. I feel this is useful stuff. In fact, I might get the nomenclature of all of the components on here, like the resistor values and a whole bunch of stuff on there. And then the board will serve a dual purpose for me. And maybe what I should use too, you've seen these, by the way. Did you, I think I've got a video on this, I don't know if I've put it out there, but DigiKey sent these sort of rulers out with lots of useful things for people laying out uh, circuits. If you're designing PCBs, it's loads of useful stuff for here, and there's some nice wire gauge sizes. But for me, at the moment, like you're putting a kit together, it doesn't help you because it doesn't have the stuff you need for, for kit building. So maybe I might do something like that. So we've got our capacitors now. Thank you very much, everybody who's shouted out for shouting in for telling me the capacitor value, um, capacitor polarities. So we've got two capacitors of the same value. C3 and C4 are 10 microfarads each. Those are the two. And there's a fat one. Nice and simple then. So we're going to find there's a negative band on the electrolytic capacitors. You can see they're generally black and then there's a grey band. Grey band actually a line through it saying negative. So I'm going to pop that through just exactly the way everybody said. So if we're right or wrong, we'll all be right or wrong together. Get some okay. solder on there. We've got like 14 joiners in the chat. Ah. In the actual Discord chat? In the Discord audio chat. I believe he's on mute at the moment, but if he unmutes his microphone, he'll be able to join in the splendid audio conversation. And it'll be, it's, it's interesting to sort of hear people's real human voices. Because we know each other from chats. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we, we met before Twitter. Have I, do I know Fair Fight 14 outside of YouTube? That's my question. And mm. I'm really embarrassed if I do. I'm not sure. 
He's on, uh, if I'm not sure if he's going to talk or he's just listening because he's got his microphone on mute still. But that's fine too. But if I if I have uh, met you, by the way, Fair Fight 14, I do apologize. Apparently you don't know him in person. Ah, oh, phew. I'm um, not any of my forgetful of people. I'm forgetful of names. I'm forgetful of places. Forgetful of pretty much everything. As you might have guessed, because I can't even remember the capacitor thing. Anything that I haven't done within the last week is just straight out the old head. But I've um, we've conversed Fair Fight 14 a lot, so I would be really super embarrassed to not uh, know you if I did know you outside. Right, so this is the last component. I can't believe it. We've been gassing, and we've just we're in there with the last component already, which is the last. I'm guessing. Let me just have a twist. Yeah, just a potentiometer. We can look on the chart if we're kind of curious as what's the range. Um, oh no, there's two kind. What? Let's be careful here. You've got two 50Ks and a 100K. Now, we could have really gone wrong there on that. Good. So we've got a question, uh, Andrew. Is the Discord chat only for patrons, or are you happy to open it up to the general public? No, everybody everybody can uh, jump in. I'm happy to open it up. So, yeah, if you, if you want to post... Okay. I'll, I'll share a link then. Yeah. But if everybody... Um... Just be anybody who can join the chat, actually the voice chat too, but you know, kind of self moderate yourself. Pretend you're all on CBs and you're you're letting each other talk. <laughs> if it gets rowdy, I doubt it will, but if it does. Right, so I've got three uh, potentiometers. Two of them are marked B503 and one of them's B104. So I'm going to take the B104, in fact, that's the 100K, and that goes into the R8 slot. No silk screen. Oh, there is silk screen. There's R8 slot. So if we put that one in first, we can't really go wrong with the others. Let's do that. I'm just trying to think. I was toying with the idea of getting the big oscilloscope. Now, this is where we could have done with that little oscilloscope working, that little DSO, because we could uh, test this. But we'll try with my other DSO. It is a bit of a chore to use it, but we want to know. We want to know if this is working. And it's definitely a lot more practical than getting the full oscilloscope under the camera somehow. Ow. That was a little bit bitey there. And that's the other one too. So, um, Electron Ash, uh, yeah, real life. Is Andrew up to? You know, first because you used to play some of your videos on the main TV. <laughs> Andrew's up to getting some kits out of the way. But it's, it's, I kind of want to do the kits, but I kind of more want to just, I want to sit and enjoy building the kits, yeah? But I also want to be social. So, this seems to be like the perfect way that we can interact socially and if you're around doing nothing whoever's around doing nothing can uh, jump in and chat and uh, I can ask ask their opinion and advice like I have already and I've learned something new about the old capacitors which I'm going to forget anyway but mod modified the board for permanent permanent use I'm certainly not a big big Clive a big Clive would uh, never forget never forget Question from uh, Retro Man Cave in your Discord. Has Andrew ever fancied making a synthesizer or any other musical project? Ooh, now that is a wonderful question because, hang on, bear with me one moment. I'm just, I'm just sort of having a shuffle around the back office here. Oh, oh yeah, found it, sort of. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you at some point, if I haven't already, about the various products I, I've made over the years, which are actual commercial products um, for people. And I can show you the evolution of this board. And um, I've actually designed on the main microcontroller an actual synthesizer that does, this is kind of like a doorbell, uh, generate all the uh, songs. And this thing, this big box on the desk, is my prototype of it. You, would you like to have a quick look? Should we stop the kit just for briefly, just to answer Neil's question? Um, let's open this thing up, because it's kind of fun. And I'm sure a lot of you will recognise what you're seeing. And I, got, I found a load of these small screwdrivers, and I thought it was a good idea to shove them all in the same pot. Now it means you can't find anything. Um, 
Yes, here we go. So what uh, what this is, it's like everything I use, I, I, you'll find booby boards. You might have seen those booby boards. It's, I build everything out of them. They're just universal. Yeah, two minute teardown. Look at this. Look what, what Wally put this screw in. Anyway, I've put in a screw I can't undo, basically. And you can see here, there's a couple of speakers hanging off a wire. These originally were going to like a big jack into an amp. Uh, but in here, I don't really want to break it, but have a look just about. I might try turning that light on again in case it works. It works! Hurrah! Um, you'll see a booby board and you'll see a load of resistors. Do you see those resistors all hanging about there? So what it is, a booby board is actually generating a sort of pulse width modulated sound on a, a capacity, uh, capacitive... Oh, bugger. My brain's gone. Anyway, it's generating, uh, it's, it has a dig basic digital to analog converter. And you can see here there's multiple resistors on that one because I was trying to increase the resolution of the D to A. And uh, yeah, it just plays plays tunes. So it is a, a very simple crude synth. Um, so I have actually made one and I've coded coded a synth in, in software. Um, and we had a question on DSPs a while back. Yeah, and that, that would be a perfect application for DSPs. Um, but I, I have been looking recently at seeing if I could get any sort of synth chips, like you get these Yamaha chips or um, speech chips, but they, they seem to be so hard to get. You're almost better off, and I think I just saw, a, saw that mentioned, um, Electron Ash saying, um, on FPGA. Yeah, I, I kind of, I was tempted, I went into the sort of ST Microelectronics STM32 range of arms and was sort of, okay, I could probably just build one in that in software. Um, and then at the same time, I kind of wanted to learn about ASICs and FPGAs, like Spartans and stuff. But then, just got no bloody time. That's the problem. Sometimes you get have to work, and then work kills all your time, and then your your capacity for learning new things diminishes massively. I'm almost tempted to uh, go back and work in a university just to sort of be a professor, so I can have bright, bright young things to execute my my ideas and dreams for me now and as, as most professors do they don't have the time to do stuff anymore um uh, for sitting on the fence about that it could be a good option really but yeah if anybody is doing any projects uh, needs any advice i can certainly point you in the right direction so if i can't i can't do i can teach how about that so i'm just look, playing with the knobs now i want to make sure i get the full range of knobbage um They've actually conveniently got a line on them. So if I just line up the marker with the line, I shouldn't really push these on too tight because when it does, when I do come to have to put them in the case, it could be a bit of a chore, couldn't it? And uh, I think there was a question on there that sort of flashed up that said something about the range of this. And we'll have a little range. If anybody wants to, to try uh, looking at the data sheet, the chip is an XR. 2206 CP um, and I'm just looking here there's nothing on here it doesn't really even say what the voltage input is on here let's have a quick look I was going to zoom I was trying to zoom this webcam in that's the circuit I know it doesn't help you probably can't read it um, there's your headers here it does look like you've got you've got certainly there's pin headers here that are adjusting various things they're going through um, capacitors into the TC2. So I think that could be the timing. Very weird. So you've got these other jumpers that say triangle and sine wave. Um, so yeah, you can definitely adjust it. I don't like it. It's a, it's a bit annoying that you've got jumpers here rather than sort of dips or switches to switch between the modes. But I think we, we can probably try this out. Let's get the old DSO running. Please have battery, please have battery, please have battery. <clears throat> yeah, has battery. So one of our probes is connected. Let's just disconnect the spare probe. Always keep your probes neat. Okay, so we've got some probage going on. I don't even know where the output is on this bloody thing. And we'll get one of Dino's power supplies. Or, I tell you what, let's play it safe. I found recently on my bench one of those, which looks kind of handy because it allows you to hook up your bench power supply just to a standard jack like that. So 
that's going to be dead and uh, let's just check that out so uh yeah electoral ash i think you're right i i i think i did a chip um a kit before that had this same chip on it and it had really nice sort of switches and stuff to switch in those things but this one was awfully cheap I, I, I can't remember the exact price but I think it was just like a couple of quid so we've got some power now I'm just going to turn the output the power supply is on but its output is off I'm going to turn that up to five volts and I'm going to current limit it down to I don't know a couple hundred milliamps or something let's hook up we've got a ground electron ash to the uh, audio chat Ooh, hello 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 well, what I'm going to do is just screw hello. in be Renee. hola 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 just going to screw this ground into here and after all that talk about keeping those little off-cut bits of wire I've only got one handy I've just chucked all the rest in the bin like an idiot I would like to ask the uh, the a question out to the out to the world there and what's the I, mean, I would like to know what's the sort of most complicated kit anybody's made because we always make these sort of little kits like they're almost practice kits we buy them as practice kits really we just just to mess around we don't really do anything serious with most of these um but there used to be really complicated kits for hi-fi and valve radios things like that has anybody out there actually built something real that you've really had to debug properly and you know it's something of value at the end right so I've screwed in our probe into that center one for now i'm just going to turn it on Ooh. Suddenly smoke arises. Yeah, I've got a, uh, it's drawing uh, 17 milliamps, so there's not much current here, but you can definitely see the, that's jumping up. So I'll just play with them. Oh, I saw a flicker. So this is kind of traditional, isn't it? You just turn it on, nothing happens. Fiddle around with stuff. Okay, so Ash says he can't remember the last time he built a kit versus designing them. Ah, look, look at the old... I just put the volts up, by the way, from five. I think five... I just figured if this is circuitry, you know, it could do just a bit more than five, maybe, like maybe six. But yeah, that's six volts. So is this silly microphone working? <laughs> Who's that? That's amazing. It's me, Fairfax. I think Fair Fight, we've got Doobie Duck online. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hiding my voice. Oh, you're hiding your voice. You're only encouraging people to use uh, signal processing tricks to sort of get it back, but that's fine. You're, you're allowed to hide your voice. Well, I'm assuming you looked at that, uh, the one and only YT video that I've made, the one that I did in the beat. I, I, have, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember one. Is it on, is it on your funny voice generator? I have it's to look on, it up. It's on the channel, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a look at that momentarily. Now, if you see this scope, it's putting out this random, the most crazy sort of picture, and that's just showing again some of these limitations with these these devices, and that the digital scopes are su you know subject to this sort of artifacts on the actual display. It does look like it's working, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to go through, do a proper test to see what's the full range of this thing right now. But it's do, it's definitely, it's, it's chooching. If I was a AV, I'd be saying it's definitely chooching away right now. I'm going to have a quick play, though, these jumpers while we're at it. Ooh, it's gone off again. There we go. I'm just going to play with some of these jumpers, see if they make any difference. They don't on the output marked square wave. And we're not getting any output on the thing marked triangle. So... That looks like something we can debug on the actual main channel. So we've, we've built the kit, and the kit is doing something. Yeah, and it's Yoshi's going, what do you expect with a Toyvoscope? Well, Yoshi is a Toyvoscope, but I'm not going to go get a bloody real scope to try to jam it under here. Stop negging me, man. 
Stop negging the stream. You're killing the birds. <laughs> no, right. that's the frame rate. So there we go. There's that one. And uh, we could put the out. Uh, let's have a quick look at this box just to see what it would look like. And um, we'll pop the knobs off. Oh, crikey. Urgh. No. Try again. Oh, look at that. It is actually laser printed. What's on it? So I'm going to read it to you because you can't see what it says. And I can barely see what it says. This top jump says triangle. TRI. The bottom one says sine. And then you have ground, square, sine, tri. So that's obviously a configurable output probably from those two jumpers. And then the various jumpers. Oh, I'm such a knob, knob hole. Look. You're supposed to have it like that, aren't you? Do. Okay, I'm not going to bother hooking it up. It probably definitely worked now. But look, so you're selecting if you want a triangle or sine wave on the ad adjustable output, and then you're selecting the frequency here. So 65k to 1 meg, 3k to 65k, 100 to 3k, 100 to 100 hertz, 1 to 10 hertz. You've got the amplitude, a fine adjuster, and a coarse adjuster. So that that's actually nice. Cool. And if it does come in all the, you know, and you get all the thing built up, let's see how this would look. Yeah, I mean, that's that's actually, it's even got all the sides and everything on the case when it's going to be assembled. So that's like a, a proper thing that won't, you know, won't get damaged by your dirty dick beaters. And I hope you all got the AVE reference there. It's not me insulting you randomly. Right. Crikey. I don't think you can beat that. That is, for, I think, I'm going to see if I can find a link for it. But yeah, that for a few quid. Brilliant. Let's pop that aside there. Now it's the sort of meteor, the meteor main event, of course, I think is the uh, calculator. Mikey L, laser printing. No, it's not really my fetish, but it's nice to see it done. You know, it's it's easy to make a case. If you think about it, I guess this whole case is laser printed, but if you're if you're using a laser, a laser cutter rather, rather than laser printing. And um, I'm going to uh, let Yoshi, Yoshi mentioned Dirty Dick Beaters because and it, it's blocked him, but I'm I'm allowing it. I'm allowing it because, of course, um, that's more of a an ex, it's a it's a colloquial expression rather than a, a swear. So we'll pop that on there. Your dirty dip beaters, which is of course slang, AVE, um, Canadian oil prospecting slang for your hands. Just pop that in there. So good. One of these days, I'm going to send someone all my old kits to sort of actually finish and sort out. Yes, look at that. So, calculators. And I've got the other one. Let me grab the other one real quick. And this way I can also give you the part numbers for these things. So that was the first calculator. And I'll see what the part number is here. Of course it doesn't. Oh, no, it's an L. L. 8q because it says here oh God, trying to I'll decode this for you I'll actually write it www.diyleyuanlyuan.com front slash l8q.html so that yeah, there's, there's the QR code for you as well. Bang! QR code it. Focus. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm running the stream at 360 people before it's even playable. <laughs> wow. And of course, while I'm saying that, it starts buffering. Why do you say that? Uh, it's, it's, I think it's because it's the laptop isn't very fast, right? So the laptop can't encode fast enough and it's sending it via Wi-Fi. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things to go wrong. Sorry, say again, Rene. My, my laptop is even older. Ah, okay. It should be doing a lot less work to play though. Um, so the issues I had with this calculator, if you, I, I didn't cover them too much in the video because I hadn't really played with it. It did annoy me for a while that when you hit equals, it sort of ends your calculation session. So if you do that minus five plus that minus thing, it's keeping the, the rolling tally, which you expect. But you see at the bottom right corner, there's always zero. Yeah. And then if I push equals, 
then it puts like the sum there, the equals part. Then if I push like plus something, it doesn't let me kind of do anything. It doesn't let me continue really until I sort of clear it. So I don't know why I'd want you want a permanent number in the bottom when you hit equals. It's a bit odd. It does have the colouring calculations, which is neat if you're not me, because I can't pretty much see the colours on things. And it does have an RLED uh, resistor um, calculator for your resistors and current drops you put in your LED value thing. So there's a few things. You've got hex to decimal conversion, but look at this, 10 hex. What idiots, why can't you just have dec? So there's a few there's a few gotchas like that, but it's effectively the same construction where you've got two uh, flat batteries, those little uh, lithium cells, the CR, whatever they are, and just a grid and a chip. But I think this will be pretty much the same, but this one won't have the fancy spy uh, backlit screen. This one actually has the more traditional seven segment. But whatever. Let's see if it just lets you do the proper. Hex, I don't know if it, it definitely can't do 10 hex. I, I, I'm pretty positive it will only maybe do normal stuff like add in. I was really, I'm really, um, I, by the way, I did check this out. That I see in here, this microcontroller is a really odd, weird one that you can only get in sort of the Far East. Um, and you certainly wouldn't want to code for it. It's based on the sort of like old, like what they'd have in a Commodore 64 or something. It's so weird. It's like one of those ones that's based on something else. I've worked out you can rip that out and probably put a PIC daughter board in there and you could run your own IC. The pinout's pretty simple. You could definitely get a PIC to do all this and then program your own calculator. But not only that, use extra GPIO and make it a data logger and put in an SD card or whatever else you want to. So that could be a fun thing to try. If you're going to go through that much effort, though, you might as well just design a new calculator PCB and get on with it. So calculator installation instructions, clock component layout diagram. So there's already a mistake there saying it's a clock. Didn't quite catch that there. It would annoy me that there isn't any brackets. Oh, any like braces? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not a scientific calculator. So again, this is all the laser cut components as before. I'm just gonna, just gonna slide that out. So we'll just, again, like the other one, we're not gonna mess around with the plastic so much, although we might have one quick sneaky peek at the front face of it after. I'm gonna take that out of the bag ready. It's an odd look. Let's just have a look, see what it's. So it's gonna be kind of a square shaped calculator I should think because I would think that's one of these is going to be for the screen there you go it's no hang on that away it's a that away of course I'm not sure why you want the uh, this bit exposed am I really duh okay that's it the final the final iteration so this will be clear of course you can see it's clear from the edge so the screen can shine through but yeah I quite like the idea of a square form factor calculator so I guess we're okay with that Got a whole, this is really heavy by the way. Let's tip out our parts here. Now if you can catch the other video, it's quite interesting how these things are assembled because you've got the numbers here and then you've got these sort of keycap system where you can do your own keycaps that fit on the tack switches. And I've not seen that before, but I quite like the idea because we, we often do these projects, don't we, uh, among ourselves, where we need to put these buttons. And this is a really nice, cheap way of doing your own sort of custom button. I'll just show you how that works. Oh, these are even better than the last ones. These ones are actually adhesive. The last ones were just bits of paper that you cut out and shove in, but these ones are actually laser cut adhesive. Nice. So that's going to look way better. That's what you want. That's actually a pretty good thing. It's finish. always better if they're mechanical, though. It's a tack switch, definitely mechanical. <laughs> yes, right, good. We won't do that though, because we're more concerned with the electronics right now, and putting on 2,000 keycaps. Ah, get off. Oh, by the way, yeah, I don't know what happened to the cover, but yeah, just pop the cover on. You can lock that down. Right, so the nice thing about these kits is there's loads of similar linear parts. So you've got loads of tack switches. You can't really go wrong with those. So I'm just going to put them all in a big pile. We'll do those at the end. Just get them out of the way. 
And you can see, again, these kits are really simple on the calculator, again, because they're just using a micro that's doing everything. No carrier for the micro, so we're going to be going in, I'm going to say balls deep with this one, because we're going to solve that straight on. But I'm going to tell you, oh, this is an Atmel. Ooh, so this is an 80 mega 328p. So this one, you definitely can reprogram. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they're giving you any headers or anything to do that. But yeah, if you've got a, an Atmel 80 mega, remember, I'm not really an Atmel fan. I'm more of a pick fan. Um, but yeah, you, there's plenty of 80 mega guys out there. You'll be able to jump on that. And uh, if there is one, I'm sure there might be an Arizona microchip pick 80 mega 328p, something that's kind of pin compatible. And I know that uh, microchip now own at hell anyway, so you don't don't feel the need to remind me of that one. Um, but yeah, the dev kits are totally different, uh, uh, so I don't really want to jump across and learn those. So all we've got to do, though, really, looking at this, we've got six resistors that are all the same value, and two caps, and that's going to be it. So hurrah! This is a quicker kit than who you know they've expected. Where's my? Oh, there it is. Where's my bender? Don't lose okay. your bender. I'm going to go for it and actually just load up this bender, and I'm going to attempt now, recklessly, to bend all six of them. So, Electrash, you are genuinely, genuinely more of a pick fan. Yeah, me too. There's a pick for every job. There'll be a pick for every job, and uh, if you're doing any commercial products especially products that need to ship in multiples. Every penny counts big time. You know, it's, you're down to like the fractions of a, a cent or a penny when you're talking millions of units. There's no way you can just keep chucking huge old things in there and expect to get away with it. We, you know, not all products are like, I don't know, something that Google will make, like a Nest or something where people pay a lot of money for something that's not really a lot in the actual hardware. But if you're buying like a, I don't know, um, something that goes in your kitchen or something that you're, you're going to buy for a quid and it's going to be all clever with a micro in it, um, you'll definitely want to save save a few quid on each unit. There's precious little profit in most things. So just popping these in. I did a. I wouldn't advise, by the way, doing the multiple bending. I, one of those has has bent wrong, and I've. Uh, I've thumbed it in. I've thumbed in a bent one. But it's sitting all right. Let's get it in there. <laughs> so, Yoshi, do you still have those booby boards? I think they were programmed up, though. You could still use them right away for doing some general GPIO. Not that there's probably much you'd want to use them for for that. But, yeah, if you you did buy a pick kit um, 3, I think, programmer, you should get in there and just sort of sort that tool chain out. And I think um, quite a few people have, and it's... You get on there because you can see how quickly if I just like the other day when I just decided I want to make a servo interface I just did it I didn't have to I just jumped in programmed up the C and it worked you don't really have to play around with anything um, I know if you're into Arduinos and stuff you can use those for doing that too they might be better if you're more the sort of hobbyist um, the reason I don't like I like to pro prototype on something that kind of resembles the final hardware because then I don't have to design out the bloody Arduino Right, so I've just tacked in those six resistors. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go around the back and sort them out good and proper. So much oxidisation on my soldering tip, but I'm just too damn lazy to clean that. Then get off your lazy ass. Ah. Uh, okay. You've brought, you've you've driven me to this. <laughs> There, is that clean enough for you? Well, there's like a 15 second delay, so I'm still not seeing it. You'll just have to trust me on that one then. Um, <laughs> the, the reason, by the way, people ask me, why does my soldering iron tip seem to oxidize so quickly? Um, it's because I run it at 400 degrees. So there's a lot of people who run their irons at just, just like the melting point of the solder, but I'm like, nope. I like to I like you to run it hot. Like scorching hot. Say again. You just want like scorching hot, but if you make a mistake, it's a big one. <laughs> yeah, and to be honest with you, what people don't realize, and I, sometimes I watch some uh, YouTube streams of people—not streams, but <laughs> videos of people 
doing PCB stuff, it, it kind of makes me cringe because they're running their irons at just pretty much the same, just above the melting point of the solder. But that's not how these things work. You've got a lot of heat getting dissipated in the PCB and the components and stuff. You don't... Your, your iron's basically going to run cold. And you can see them doing this cold soldering virtually, and it's they're pushing it around like a slightly bit of just molten lead, it looks like. And you're like, ooh, go do it. don't do that. Um, and then people go, oh, but you're going to damage the components. It's not like you're hanging around. Bang, you're done. Look, bang, you're done. There's not that much heat's gone into that component. But, you've, you know, you've got a pretty good joint. That's what you're, you're aiming for, a good joint and saving time. And uh, I'm pretty sure... There you go. I know... I know you always you're always up for a good joint. <laughs> so geographically, Rene, remind us where you are, sir, if you don't mind revealing that information. The Netherlands. The Netherlands. Isn't the Netherlands a place where you can get a good joint anyway? Yeah. All right. There you go. I've never really been in for that sort of thing, but uh, those those who partake, I hear they enjoy it. So. Well, tell you what, let's throw the question out to the YouTube chat. Where in the world is everyone in the world in the YouTube chat? Put it in the channel. That's a very good idea. So, you've heard, you heard the man. Where are you, everybody? Oh, well, reinstalling Windows in a VM for the fourth time today. Yay. <laughs> you think like the same like <laughs> Right, so I've just gone for a trick to trying to use this ruler to bend all of these legs simultaneously, and I've bent, I have bent all the legs simultaneously, but bent them wrong. So I'm just going to repair, repair those. You done fucked up again. It happens. It happens. I was expecting. Right, let's see if that works. Uh, almost. We're almost there. Oh, oh, crike. Oh, okay. First things first is always to put your ICs on the floor for a bit as well. They like that. <laughs> I, know, I, I love how people always really panic about static. I've never worked in an environment and myself has ever given a damn about static. You know, sometimes I am feeling a bit staticky. I'm wearing a jumper and it's like cracking and arcing and popping. Yeah, if you're like that, try to discharge something on that but. Wearing the uh, anti-static bands and the whole, I don't know, thing on your head. <laughs> Tesla coil on your head. It's, I've never found that necessary. So, uh... Oh, All God. the electronics, they will suffer a lot from that. Though. Modern stuff, I have to agree with it. It doesn't seem to really matter from my lack of knowledge compared to you lot. But I've never tried any of the new stuff. It was the old stuff that, if you weren't hooked up to the radiator and all that silliness, it just that. It's going dead. Well, I think you're right, and I think there was a lot of different technologies in the past. So you had like the is it CMOSy stuff, and then you have things based on all these various things. When I when I remember like if you think you've got a lot of stuff tested where they uh, put these really high voltages and to simulate I don't know like lightning and stuff like that to see how the object uh, reacts. And the things normally survive after a reset, and that's being hit with, you know, 15 kilovolts or something. So oh, I don't. Well, great for making. So there's our uh, IC in. That was pretty quick. I could have stepped you through each pin, but I think you you get the picture on those. We've got a LED panels, and they're slightly bent up. Let's just see how this is doing it. I'm just going to have a... I'm, I'm kind of curious. There's no circuit here, but before I just put those in. What you're going to have on this is... There's your screens. I'm kind of seeing if they're going through these resistors. I'm not sure they are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it would be. So these are like a common cathode screen. And these are the resistors that are limiting the current overall. And this will just be probably multiplexing the characters. So it will basically fire up one character at a time and then as it's multiplexing to the next one it will just change the configuration of the anodes to put the next character on the screen. So it could be a little bit flickery. If we can catch that flicker, 
which would be kind of cool, then we can prove that's how it's doing it. But I've done a, a, a number of these type of projects myself, driving these screens. In fact, dum, 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 up above me, I've got a whole load of screen driver ICs and actual these uh, LED screens. We've got, to we got to figure out how we're going to get rid of those. So we might design a project that requires them so I can make you know, get a bunch of PCBs uh, manufactured so we can just start using them. We'll do something retro. Maybe we could do a calculator, but I think it's kind of lame using these as calculators now for the kind of calculations we would want to do. But saying that, my calculations I want to do are just binary and hex. So binary, hex, and decimal. So I could get away with it with one of these. It remind me of those old computer kits we used to get. Speaking of calculators, though, is what would be a good graphical calculator? these days. There's the ones that I had at school in like the 1990s. You don't seem to be defined anymore. They don't seem to be in the big Smiths like they used to be. Well, like the old Casio FXs, that kind of thing. Yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. But something a bit bigger and better than like what was, because just as I was finishing my A-level, other students got to uh, ones that could, you could program in like a, a basic form of Mario and stuff, whereas my, you know, all different colours and stuff, whereas mine was just a black and white thing, or black and grey thing. Well, my favourite, which is a mod, uh, it's quite an old one, but they have was these TI Voyage. Oh, it still works. <laughs> and um, so these were like almost computers. These were based on the TI the Titanium ninety nine. So you can still buy those. But if you are looking to buy a calculator yourself for your own actual, real, genuine use, TI do a range and i think they're quite cheap it's like i don't know it's like, it's like 130 quid for the calculator and you're going whoa boy that's uh that's a lot of money for a calculator but this particular range has uh io like gpio so you can actually plug it in and make it's got data loggers oscilloscopes programming and you can make your own Great. um programmable logic compile they're, they're amazing um I can't well, remember. Was you, you went to some uh place didn't you there was you some show yeah. That, that's the ones, yeah, and I, I kind of, I'm, I'm meant to look into those a bit more. Maybe <laughs> maybe I could get them to send me a freebie or something. Um, but they look like, you know, because I, I, I use booby boards, for example, to do loads of different projects because I do prototypes with them, and then sometimes I just throw them away and reuse the boards. That sort of calculator might actually allow me just to prototype things, proof of concepts on maybe breadboard, and then program all the logic into the calculator. I think that's what they were kind of designed for that university school thing. But for me, I thought that price was pretty cheap. I remember the guy, he said, oh, it's really, it's quite expensive. And I think it was, it was like a hundred and something. I mean, I'm sure it was like under the 150 mark. And then obviously you'd have to pay for all the IO interfaces you want to use. Like I think it had Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, everything. Which, you know, why are we surprised at that, by the way? I mean, if you think about it, everything's using these ARM chips. It was quite, quite beefy. So it was only a matter of time, I suppose, till the calculator company started using them as well um, and just using all those features. I mean, you could make a cracking calculator, for example, out of a Raspberry Pi, couldn't you? Yeah. I remember looking up those calculators from when you did that video, and the only place I could see what sold them was them themselves from America, but then that, of course, would slap on a lot of import tax and blah, blah, blah. Ah, maybe, maybe they haven't brought them here. Maybe that was the whole thing. Maybe it was like part of their launch to bring them to the UK. I'm sure Farnell or someone will have them. Um, I'm just thinking, what was that last... There was something I, I just... I think Andrew agreed something. Andrew, what was the last thing I said before that? There was I just there was a something on my mind. I'm not sure. Um, bugger. What were you talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But there was... Uh, and then the brain fart appears. It was definitely a brain fart. As I'm sort of, I, got, I got too engrossed with putting all these tax switches in. <laughs> um, yeah, we were talking about calculators. And we were talking about... No, oh well. well. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. We're using a Raspberry Pi. Um, so what I was going to say, yeah... yeah if you used a Pi Zero as a calculator brain, that would be pretty good because you get quite a lot of just general GPIO SD card. But you need to run it. And Andrew, this is like those things we're getting for the Beeb. 
You mm. don't want it. I hate putting Linux on everything. I love Linux, but don't keep a friggin' sledgehammer to crack a nut. Everybody's <laughs> buying pies to flash some friggin' LEDs. And you're just like, come on, guys, just learn the assembler or just get the bare bones seat on that arm because you can access all those peripherals at lightning speed. Stop being this lazy friggin' Unity style programmer who just doesn't know how anything works and you're just drawing the circuits. You know what I mean? It's just get on with it. This is the reason why the world is rotting and we're wasting so much fuel and fossil fuels on things. It's because people are doing everything in the laziest, wasteful way. <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting on your your rant that no child no child should be allowed a graphical interface before the age of ten. Absolutely, and I, again I think Neil's busy. I think he was in the stream briefly, but um, Neil said something. Andrew, is this what happens? He said I do like your streams because you start off uh, talking about a game or whatever. But normally you just end up turning it off and ranting about something. So will this be the rant of the day? There's nothing wrong with a rant of the day. It's, 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 it's good. It, uh, it's needed occasionally. It is. It is. It's, it's, it, it's, it's so a common. human face on it. I, just, I dislike now that everybody's trying to... They're, they're trying to do these things and everything's like a CAD, isn't it? Nobody's learning the basics on how assembler works or machine code or byte code. They're just jumping in at such a high level. You know, I'll tell you what the problem is, right? If there's a massive war, <laughs> humanity won't be able to build a computer anymore, you know, when, when, when all the, the nuclear fallout has dissipated because mm -hmm. none of these bloody people have ever just sat down and learned how anything works. <laughs> I agree with you. You were saying, though, that are you, have you ordered the, um, the Pi Zero for the BBC, then? Um, I, I haven't ordered it, but I have I have a Pi Zero knocking around. But uh, Andrew is going to put a he's going to give that guy the shock of his life and put in some sort of massive order for them. I've, to, I've spoken to the guy and asked for three of um, asked for a price of three of the interfaces for the uh, the Pi and the Pi. Well, basically takes the, the Pi three or the Pi Zero um, to connect to the D through the. Yeah. I think you'd be mad to use the Pi three. It's the user port or something, isn't it? That, it's, yeah, it's the tube. It's the, the tube one, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I've got on my uh, BBC Master. I couldn't... Because um, for the Master you can get an internal one, but I didn't bother with that because I've got that fancy... Uh, what the name of the gadget called now? So you can have extra colours on the BBC and stuff. Yeah, I actually, that's, it, that's a good point, and I'm glad you're on the uh, Discord because... Well, I wanted to know about that a little bit more, maybe see that. Um, but Andrew, I don't know if you're aware. Check out my video. I, I, I certainly will. I, I, actually, I think I have. I did check <laughs> it out. I did check it out. See, remember I was saying about forgetting? I have checked out your bloody video. Yes, I, I have. But, well, well yeah. I, I'd like to know, though, how you can use the power of the tube when you're running your BBC Basic at 3 megs. <laughs> three megahertz you should be able to get that thing to just do some amazing like filled polygons and insano stuff that the bee was never never meant to do well running with that basically to running them together there's a as you know i don't very, know very much about programming and electronics and stuff but basically the it's possible to run a, a zx spectrum emulator on the bee well, that, that tube interface lets you run a, P a PC. So well, that's what I'm saying, though. It's got that interfacing with the Pi Zero that I'm using. It gives you lots of different uh, ROMs to choose from. Ah, OK. Dang, I'm jealous. I wish I even had a Pi. Oh, you could go buy a Pi. Isn't a Pi Zero supposed to be like £3 or something? Or is that all just bollocks? Like they're a tenner. Oh, they're a tenner. But I, the thing is, I only have cash, and they don't sell me stores in the Netherlands. Oh, you don't do do uh, non cash. I don't have any on. I only have like real cash. Right. So just a quick board update. I've uh, soldered all those tacks, which is it's a it's a nice heavy board actually now at this point. But I've now discovered there uh, some of them are in wonk. So that's going to be an unpleasant experience now, where I'm going to have to do the Soldering two pins at once. Oh, I can manage. Yeah. Yeah. Done it. More torture. More heat. 
Actually, I think there's only two wrong, so I think I was not too bad on this one, but that's why, again, why it's nice to have the hot... Oh, I heard it crack into place there. The uh, hot soldering iron, that's, it, it, it heats up that pad so hot that it will uh, stay molten for a few seconds longer than normal. Do it! There we go. Heat it till the solder squeaks. Nice. So do we put the battery on or do we do the uh, key caps? Put the battery in. Oh, you just can't wait. You're too calculator hungry. Let's do this. This thing is bored because installing Windows for the first time is not very fun. Oh. In three different emulators or virtualization stuff. Yeah, but you're what? trying to install Windows 7 on no. this thing. Windows POS Ready 2009, basically Windows XP, oh. but still supported. Yeah, the embedded I, one. I was just thinking about going, going back to trying to install Windows uh, 3 after so many floppies and things like that. That, it was tedious. Oh, yes. Thank God I haven't had that bad. Right, guys, are you ready? <clears throat> yep. The battery is going... Oh, oh, the camera's gone all blurry. There we go. Focus, you f... Okay. Calc. <laughs> Calc 1.5. Woohoo. Oh. Calc okay, 1.5. And... That, that gets me thinking, sorry, with something Renee was saying. Okay, let's, let's have a show of hands of everyone. Who remembers having to park their first hard drive? Yes. Yeah. Nope. Uh, 30 megabyte hard drive, which wasn't like a normal hard drive. It was an expansion card for the ISA port. Mm -hmm. The oldest oh. I used, I think it was like a. I knew it was running like Windows XP. Which version of Windows, sir? XP. Wow. <laughs> Extra power. I my first PC was running uh, an SL 3.3. Yeah. Nice. Electron Ash, I'll check the LEDs now. The LC, uh, let's see. I, I got, I got tempted to by putting on the buttons, but I, I kind of thought it seemed it was okay. But I'll just do it real quick. I want to get the buttons on before we go through functionality. So see. The PC I was using was it had two full size five hundred kilowatt drives. Just, just in case you don't know, a full size drive is twice the height of a CD-ROM drive. Here. Mm. I know. I've watched plenty of videos to know. Well, plenty of people half my age wouldn't know, so... Yeah, half height I think is like just, you can fit two in one space. Yeah, half, half height, yeah, it's uh, that's a normal DVD drive or something like that, that's half height. I remember being bl absolutely blown away when my father, who was a, a managing director of a company at the time, brought home his brand new luggable PC. Oh yeah, lovables. No problems, lovables. <laughs> Guys, can I, I just pause you one moment. I just uh, uh, just noticed something there that Electron Ash has said. Something about LED tweezers. Oh, wow. Are, are, they, are they a sort of surface mount tweezer that um, puts current through so you can test a surface mount LED? Or are they actually just tweezers that for plucking nose hairs that have an LED so you can see what you're doing? <laughs> Everything can be an LED if you try hard enough. Yeah, that's true. Ah, I think you could always get components to selling RGB yeah. LED nose tweezers. LED nose tweezer wax. Yeah, but with RGB ones though. Oh god. <laughs> Someone will buy it. Look at that! You're getting through these buttons now. They're not these. These ones are a little bit nicer when they've got the uh, sticky rather than the bit of paper that you had to fold over. That is sticky better than shitty. Sticky is better than shitty. Absolutely. I I quite like. I really want to do something with a tactile interface now that you. I know these buttons exist. It's kind of cute, isn't it? Maybe some sort of flight simulator elite dangerous thing not that i get to play that Ooh, anymore yeah <laughs> make your own zx81 keyboard or just even zx spectrum keyboard i think this is an improvement oh they're so jiggly 
Now, depending on the sort of aperture... Booby board. Yes, I think... I wish I made the booby board with that... You know that other board I just showed you? That really would have been a really good booby board because it would have had so much more I.O. and capability. But you've got to remember, the booby boards are like nearly, I don't know, 10 years old, their design. You've got a lot of them. So you get a lot of use. One of the fun things on a booby board as well I quite like to do is just to hit, hit, hit up, attach a lot of these sorts of probes and uh, maybe with something like one of these ribbony cable things and just use it as a data logger just whenever i would need a data logger i'll just get one and code it to be a data logger rather than leave them permanently a permanent data logger firmware it's it might seem weird to people that you just jump in and change the c to whatever you need but i don't want people to just interact with their hardware at that level not be uh not be scared of the code. Be one with the code. The code is your friend. Don't let become all of these the become the code. But you know you know what it is? It's like if you don't know how to fix your car, yeah? And you, you take it to a... Car. You must become the car. No, and you take it to a uh, garage and they say, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's broken. That's going to cost you a thousand pounds. And you go, okay. And then they charge you a thousand pounds to just change an oil filter or something. Um, <laughs> you, you know... It's, it's wrong you shouldn't you know you should have some understanding at least you, you know how the world works and, and how you then you can interact with these people in a sensible way but yet why are you completely happy to just trust all the code that gets written to sort of you know these well these facebooks and things and then they uh, they fuck you over well, See, definitely, definitely no Facebook fucking you over Say again, um, there. I think uh, you were saying something about IQ. Most people don't have a high enough IQ to understand lots of different things. And that, I think that's why most people get ripped off in whichever way. Do you think that's it, or do you just think they just don't care? They don't care to learn. I think it's society's way. Okay. It's society so disposable, everything's so one use that. They just don't bother scratching beneath the surface of things anymore since, let's face it, most people, if your TV breaks at home, most people go buy a new one. Yeah, not like, not like when we, I suppose, uh, when They when won't, we, like, go out and buy a used one. No, they don't go and get them repaired. I mean, how many, how many places sell TV, like, TV repair shops and things? No. Yeah, they've long since died out, haven't they, from CRTs as well. Exactly. So it's it's well, exa exactly as, as floating fat man says. Everything is throwaway these days. It's disgraceful, and it is. I mean, it's it, it, that people should be maybe having things to fix, but it is easy just to get and cheaper to go buy everything, which is why people do get ripped off because the the, the the little bits of fixing that gets done on all the various things. I feel that we need to put the case on this bad boy. Yes. Has the... it been a naughty boy then? That's right. The SIG gen, I feel that I uh, will put the case on, but I'll probably do some... We'll maybe do a video and, and put it on the oscilloscope first just to make sure it's working. But this thing, I think it's it's pretty much working. <laughs> Minus one. So, uh, it's just about to be being ripped off. Like, my cousin, like, and yeah, he knows that I know a fair bit about TVs and amps and all that sort of stuff. He still might to go off to... Uh, whichever shop it was he went to, and get charged 50 quid for a HMI cable. Oh, that's the common one, and you, I, I can't even go into a branch of curries or, or whatever, because you hear people and the telling people, and it's, you want to step over, but you just, I don't know, it feels awkward. Go, just go next yeah, door to, I go next door to power bank. But it might have been a gold connector for HDMI cable. You know how they're better. I rolled on the thighs of yeah, the yeah, yeah. That was the thing, it was some it was something that you'd expect. I understand like fifty pounds HMI cables do exist and they are needed because they need them to like large presentation offices or something like that. Need to get long, long runs, that kind of thing. The so, military. That makes sense, but, but I remember um I was in TC World and someone had bought a printer just in front of me and they're asking, Oh you, what kind of um USB cable do I need? And the girl at the checkout was saying, oh, we have some over there, and there's so-and-so. So 
And I just had to butt in, it's my personality, but I just had to butt in and said, get yourself off to town and go to the town shop and they'll be in there and they cost a pound, obviously, instead of the £12.99 or whatever they're trying to charge. And the, the girl was trying to say, oh, but it's, it'll be a better cable, it's better copper and stuff like that. And I was like, well, no, I'm an IT expert. <coughs> and, uh, you know, a pound one's more than enough for the two metres run that you need. <laughs> yeah, like at my school, I was once told by the um, ICT guy, Guess how much for the, there are like twenty um classes. Guess how many or how much they spent on HDMI cables. A hell of a lot of money. Oh yes. I think it was like ten thousand. Yeah. Ridiculous. I just died in laughter at that point. But unfortunately most people are not educated enough to care or know. Um, the difference, so they just take the belief in what the assistant in the shop says. That's how companies like Packard Bell manage to exist. <laughs> yes, very much so. Oh well, I'm like screwing with it. It's so old, it still says Compaq. Oh, those were okay. <laughs> Compaq. Well, Compaq was good before HP took them over. Yeah. Yeah, but not bad. Like, the iPad I'm screwing with. Of course, I don't know why, but it's, of course, because of all the jokes, running version 4.20. I'm not kidding. <laughs> God, this, this, by the way, if you're ever doing this, this part is just so awful. Um, be yeah, it's like you're trying to find the end of the cellar safe, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be triggering my OCD on fingerprints. If you're ever doing this, this part is just so awful. Ha <laughs> ha. Is that my own voice yeah. echoing back? <laughs> Yay, Windows 7 screwing up again. Yay. Andrew, what about all of the I, I, what about all of the uh, flux on the board that's going to be visible inside that case? Do you need me to wash that first? No, I'm all right with that. It's just, it's just fingerprints on like clear clear plastic. I really have a problem. <laughs> but uh, you'd be more annoyed with the fingerprint being on the inside, though, wouldn't you? Oh, that would not really get in here. Well, it is conductive, so... Maybe it's well, that's what annoyed me was when I was trying to upgrade my uh, Apple Mac, and it turned out, I, I thought I'd like to put the thumbprints off, and it turned out I had one on the inside of the glass. Oh. <laughs> clean hand. There we go. Look, we're almost there. Can you imagine that this will feel even more tedious doing that SIG gen, where all the bits are like half the size? I think they put this acrylic on there because the laser won't, um, it helps the laser cut too. Not sure if the laser would uh, refract or something if it hit that plastic directly. I hate my PC. Uh, five it's just because it's one big sheet though, isn't it? And it just, it's not even because they're in it. They their fingerprints all over it instead of yours, that's all. Yeah, I, supp I suppose at the end of the day, it does kind of keep it fingerprint-free. Yeah. And right. also, when they're knocking out thousands of them, as they're sliding down whatever shooter while it stops the scratching. I've noticed something that looks quite cute, though. They've, there's an interesting feature on these I'll point out in a moment. Right, so that's the last of it. Right. I'm... Oh, i got I got to wipe that down. That is awful. I'm just going to get a bit of a rag. Oh, screw it. going to try it on another computer. Running Windows 10 this time. Another four emulators. Where's my brush here? Okay, can't find me a brush because I had a... As I said, I had a, I have a clear out. I might, I'll, I'll send on Twitter a picture of the uh, back office because it's so wonderfully clear now. I've cleaned everything away, then I can't find it anymore. <laughs> I know that feeling. When are you going to do the mouse mat for, you, for the board? Like the wooden board that you use. We spoke about it before, you're going to make mouse mats of it. Ah, uh, I've got... Yeah, I should actually. I did... I did. Remember we did the early load of mouse mats. What I've got to do, I've got to work out a way. There's a lot of uh, merchy type things people are actually starting to ask me for. And I've got to sort my stuff out because, for example, I've got that uh, web website shop, and 
because I don't have the volume, sometimes when I get these things, it's like, oh, you know, I've got to remember how am I supposed to ship something? How do I print the printing label and that? Um, and it's a lot of work. So I've got to figure out how to do all these things in a way that's not too much effort um, and actually doesn't end up costing me too much. I don't, there's not A lot of those things kind of almost run you at a loss. And I'm not sure how people do it. I think they might just get stuff drop shipped from third parties. So you kind of give your design to a third party and you allow them to sell it, you know, on your yeah. behalf. I, I think used to, you know, we used to use Cafe Press, which was a site that did that kind of thing. You just sort of load your images, set your margin on it, and then they print and ship and everything. So maybe, just maybe I might do that. Um, Neil... Uh, at the retro man cave got me a cracking mug uh he did me a mug and i love it i'd, I'd quite like to get some of those made Ooh, hello just noticed something so on this calculator there's a cutaway on the top for the battery which i understand but on the bottom it's actually got a single cut away here and i don't know what that's for it might be for a lanyard or something i'm just going to pop it in you know randomly but what hang on why the hell would you want to take it with you on a lanyard oh this is for the side it's for a side one of the sides hang on let's see what side it might be oh it's it's for the battery side it's it's for the battery side to help you push the get a little screwdriver in so you push a little screwdriver in the small hole and lever out the battery to fire it out the big hole so that's that's okay oh, not about about this. it's like at least you can get the battery out of it. I've got other things where the battery's pretty much permanent. And you'd have to undo... Well, that, that other calculator I showed you, you'd have to undo all the screws to get to it, which you're never going to want to do. And then I've dropped a link in Discord for a type of merch shop that's totally free. And you can do, like, even phone cases and stuff. Freemerch.org.net Nope. Like you, if you want one, you still gotta pay. But like designing and the shop is free. Oh, okay. Right, it, it kind of. Oh no, there's a bit of fur under there. You you can't see it at home, but I can't live with that. I've gotta give it a bit of a wipe then. I can't even run the stream anymore because my computer keeps crashing. Oh wait, no, oh, Chromecast. Yeah. Okay, let's do so, this. The guys in the chat are discussing, following on from HDMI cables to start cables, now talking about the benefits of, uh, of PAL versus NTSC and RGB. Ooh. I have no idea what the benefits are of either of them, so... Oh. <laughs> Never the same colour twice. Can... Yeah. <laughs> to my own personal experience, being from a PAL region, the UK obviously, I have to say that the RGB and NTSC, it makes sense to get it because the way a lot of the games got coded for NTSC, if you're going to go for like the, the Genesis stroke Mega Drive or something like that. But the TV watching, R576 uh, made a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, like, I never even noticed like any of it. Oh, ass potatoes. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Right. That doesn't sound good. So you have four. You've got four screws, which really quite nicely. They've actually made a feature on the case where you don't need a nut on the end. So you know it's kind of annoying. You have a nut sticking out the back of a lot of these. So they've got a feature that stops that. But then you've got another four screws with nuts to hold the PCB down, um, which I haven't done. So I've got to do that kind of bloody bit again. But at least, Just at least it's blue tack in, it'll be fine. It's quicker, you know. And it's not just asking why the funny voice. I mean, it's that time you told us. <laughs> Who, me? Why my funny voice? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so they've provided these screws, which if anybody can see, there's not much bite on them. There's, there's nothing. I'm not even sure how you're going to get a nut on the end of that, but I'll try. Unless I've got it horribly, horribly wrong, which I'm pretty sure I don't. Wouldn't be the first time, I guess. <laughs> Let's crank that one on a bit. Yeah, yeah look at the, uh, the way it's kicking that board off. 
there's going to be a lot of flex. You can see the flex that you'd, you'd have if I if you use those. Use flex seal. Some flex seal. There you go. Oh bollocks. <laughs> Ill protected. So yeah. let's have a look here. Do I actually have to cut off all of these tax switch feet? Yes, you do. Uh, and suddenly a good design goes for me. Yeah, a good design goes to just a terrible one. I suspect they just put the wrong screws in the case. The little catcher is getting really filled up with these. It might be quicker just to put it on the sander. Has anyone yeah, been watching that yeah, um, computer show that's on there a Friday night? And I thought it's that comedian doing supposedly about computer games. What, is it on Channel 4, is it? Yeah, I've forgotten his name. No, I've not started watching that yet. There's been some flack given to those pe to that show by those people who support the Mr. Biffo project. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Um, yeah. I've not watched it, so I wouldn't comment myself on it right now. Um, and I'm not from the UK, so I don't even know what you're talking about. No, actually, it's not the one with Dara O'Brien. Um, no. no, not epic. It's that comedian with all the teeth if he always gets said to have that. Mm. Okay, that's the bulk. Oh, no! Got a lot of metal shards now. Chads. Is it chads they were called? The little... the, the If you've got a hole punch. The hole punch. And then you have the little bits that come off it. Bob Beckett. That's his name. Ooh. Let's see. What was his name? Rob Beckett. Rob Beckett. Well, I watched the last two episodes and it's just... Just rubbish, from my own person. Rob Beckett's yeah. playing for time. Yes, that's it. So wh why do you feel it's rubbish? Well, mainly because he's not even old enough to play in the games oh, at shit. an age where it would make sense. Take it back, yeah. he, back to the 1980s. Then he, then he plays a game in the 1990s. They skip over the 2000s, and then they, they make him play a game from like, the 2010s. No, I don't necessarily agree with one of, one of the points there. I mean, the, the whole thing about people being aged to enjoy retro, having been there, I don't think is doesn't matter all that much. But I think it's about having an inter a genuine interest and appreciating what things were like at that time. As long as you can sort of separate that, you know, graphics in the 80s and the 90s aren't as good as they are now. I don't see that the age, age matters all that much, and as long as they're treating it with with proper respect. I mean, what I only skimmed through the program to watch it properly, but it's very much going to be a game that's, that's sponsored by game. So it's going to be pretty clear where their loyalties sort of lie. Well, maybe I should explain myself better. Yeah, I do agree with you that the age part of it doesn't matter, but it's more of they're saying things like they obviously don't understand anything of it. Mm. But that time period, and because of that, it makes it so, so you're, you're saying it's historically so inaccurate? So there's some of the things that they're saying, yes. And some of the things that they have in the background and stuff, they say they're in so-and-so year, and it's like, well, no, that didn't come out that year. Mm. It came out at a later time. Obviously, if it came out an earlier time, then yes, you would have it in your so-called living room, which is what the so-called basement for the stuff and yes, you would have it. But if it's come out at a later time, then no, you don't. But the whole thing's supposed to be time travel, and it doesn't bring it together because it's supposed to fit a certain year. Right. Guys, I'm just going to give up on that uh, mounting the board thing. It's not going to work out. I'm just going to do the case screws because it, it's just got the wrong hardware. But just for fun, I'm going to leave the battery out to see if it's how hard it is to put that in once it's all cased up. Always up for a challenge, huh? But anyway, with that Rob Beckett thing, you'd be better off watching pixelated YouTube videos of um, bad influence or something if you want to know about all computer games. Well, guess how I'm, wa how I'm watching the stream then. It's like a 360p on a TV. 
Darn it, Danish, but... No, I'm getting, I'm getting a nice 720p stream here. Come on, there we go. So it's in, but it's, it's, the keys are very much almost recessed, but I think I quite like that, that's fine. So we'll just put the four screws in. I think we're almost there. Nice. We'll see how, it looks like it's going to be a bit rattly without those. I need to figure out what AVE calls a uh, screwdriver. Ooh, that's nice. I like the technology they use there to do a self-threading screw hole in the Perspex. Oh, Ash was saying Bad Influence was one of the greatest programs ever made. He used to record all the episodes on his Betamax. <laughs> I actually, is a, is a weird one. I, I missed Bad Influence. I don't know how I did that. I've watched it since, you know, on the, the sort mm. of YouTube, but I never, I don't remember it as a kid. What channel was it on? ITV, it was Children's ITV. Ah, uh, we weren't, yeah, we didn't watch ITV. Yeah, yeah BBC, because you're so middle class. You're so middle class, exactly. <laughs> In the comments on the stream last night when everyone disappeared to go buy the good balsamic vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that even yeah, comes so from. Brought up as a working class lad, but yeah, I still end up with the BBC. The ITV was too naughty for my family for some reason. <laughs> right, so let's let's put this calculator through its paces. If anybody would like to uh, give me a sum, I'm happy to try it while I'm putting my little my nuts away. Okay, try it. Eight zero zero eight, and then hold it upside down. Okay, so what am I doing? 8008. We don't really need to hold it upside. 8008. Yep, so it's capable of doing the full boobs. Yep, yeah, I suppose I never thought. Can it do this one? 1384. 4502. No. Oh. It should be alright. It should be alright. Boobless upside down if you do the sunrise. Oh, look at this as well. It's got an interesting. Um, Let's see if we can have a quick look at the circuit. There's an interesting interaction here, because if you hold down the keys, range, um, it was going a bit mental. Mental, mental, chicken oriental. Anyway, let's just... 10 minus 90. No, let's try that again. Oh. Right. 10 minus 90. Oh no, it worked there. 80. Well, oh, if I could broke it again. Wouldn't be the first time, but It's alright. I mean it's 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 as as something that'd be like a school kids project or something, it's good. I mean if you wanted it for simple sums. Yeah, I mean I'm gonna, I'm just looking next to me. There's I've got like a whole load of calculators here um from Billy Sarsted that I'm kind of gonna fix, but this one uh, doesn't, it might work, but it doesn't have a battery, something like that. I have to 3D print something for that, but... There's something about this one where the, the spacing is almost too far apart for the buttons. But it does it does give you that feel like the sort of Sinclair calculators. It, you know, the, yeah, uh, the... we need more cal calculator videos. <laughs> more calculator videos. Keep on calculating. So there you go. I kind of think I'm done, really. I, 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 I can't bear to do this one right now. I kind of feel like I need a bit of lunch. I haven't even finished my first coffee or had breakfast yet. But yeah, if there's any questions, now's a good time. I'm, I'm going to sit back and have a quick look at the uh, comments. But if there's any questions or anything, I'm happy to answer. Maybe about the kit. Maybe about the back office in general. I could turn the webcam around. Ooh, do it. Do it. Let me see how I can... It was really sensitive to set up a webcam on a on a boom. It's on, it's on, it's on a crazy boom. I'm going to take a photo because it looks like a friggin' robot right now. It looks amazing. This looks like the most amazing thing in the world. On, on a boom. It's on a crazy boom. I'm going to take a photo because it looks like a boom. You're not even doing its setting. Damn. <laughs> 
Uh, this gets confusing now. I'm gonna have to mute you in Discord and go to the YouTube video because it's, it's like a really bad Bruce Lee. Yeah, Bruce Lee video. It's a self-turning webcam. This is this is this is what you paid for, guys. Now comes the twerking. <laughs> oh God, please don't. Um. Oh, God, do, you, do you like I've got some uh, the old braces on today? We're doing some oh, braces. God. Well, you are forty now, aren't you? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just tell you why. I'll tell you why. Right. Um, we found these jeans. These jeans in the in a box. I don't wear them because they're really baggy, and I, I can't I can't keep them up. But I, I kind of refuse to like throw them away. But they become work jeans. But I think they're pretty good. I reckon you could get a couple of us in here. No problem at all, but you know, it's all right. It reminds me of the Chuckle Brothers. I was going to say uh, Bobby Ball. Bobby Ball, exactly. And the benefit of this being on a webcam, of course, is we can sort of take it around. We've got a few fun things to try here, and I'm doing a video on this virtual boy. And you can see I've even solitate the SD card onto it, so I don't lose that that content. But I've had a big old tidy up. You know, some of you might have visited the back office, but look here, we've got all of the uh, junk that was on here now has kind of been moved and replaced with other kinds of junk. But computers, all of them here. So at some point, I'm going to come out of city for months. Well, yeah, that's that's why I definitely want to mod because it seems to be a, like a, a relatively easy one to mod. But and for those of you who like the old spectrums, I did have a go at this enter key here. It's still Dang, crappy. Computers. It's still a bit sticky though, so I'm gonna have to sort that. I don't know why. I think it's because they've only got for all the other keys, they've got one uh, like um rubbery thing under each key and the enter's only got one itself but it's got three holes so i think it's binding i don't know if there's a little spring or something you can get in there give it a bit of a boost you could try so there's some comments there trying to like, because the videos like yours that my wife forgives me for all the technology that's in one of the rooms now so I'll tell you what we've got on the stream. Anybody in the comments or something? We have the BBC B, and that's got the, if you can just about see it under there, the SD card interface, and Andrew's sorting out the tube interface. We've got the Spectrum Plus, TRS-80, the modded STE, which is the one which has had the new TOS, the GoTech. Remember, the case was already a bit cut. Someone put a, a shitty kind of hard, uh, floppy in there, so I'd already just cut out this extra bit so I could just put the mouse port out here we've got the commodore 64 right there we've got two sony Iron hit bits underneath it and under the bench we have the uh, other atari st and we have a uh, amstrad ppc now missing one somewhere yeah there's a spectrum plus two out back so we got we got we've got enough to be getting on with when we choose to do that i'm really jealous of the amount of retro shit you have and there's there's all the just I have but it still works is a freaking eye pack. That's enough. You don't need all this rubbish in your house. I wish I did though. No, believe me, it it gets to a point where you start to wonder yourself, do you really need all this? So floating fat man says he thinks it's sacrilegious to cut a case, and I one hundred percent agree. I think I don't like it when I see people modding cases and things like that. And um this one though was already modded so for me to sort of just i just filed out enough to get this joystick port in here what i might do i saw an atari falcon yesterday i might try to just cut this out nice Sorry, and square you, you got a falcon yesterday did you no i, I saw i saw an atari oh, falcon there was one in, one in neil's i wish <laughs> and the falcon though has a normal uh drive hole in here they've made a nice rectangular drive hole so i might try to emulate that and do the same here and clean that up so at least it's kind of something I legitimate that, that Atari did i installed a cosmox x in mine which is basically it's got a retro pie in it and a fancy circuit board and it lets you use it as a digital floppy drive or a cd drive and it's got all the same kind of functions that you get from the atari I've, I've definitely seen those. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't want to go the same route I did with the Amiga where I had all the Blizzard and all of that stuff and it was still kind of crap at the end of it. 
so I'm trying to just keep it real as, as I'm, I'm, I kind of I, I think I am going to be like the minimalist modder where I mod um, mod stuff but I, I only to the point where I can attach it to modern storage devices because yeah, really, I, I, I was in a stream last night I don't know if you, you caught that but in that stream I said uh, basically <sighs> For me, it's just amazing that these computers can run run with those modern storage devices, right? So you're actually just unleashing the natural potential. So if you're using a GoTech or something on your ST and it's running a bit a lot faster than it does on a normal floppy, it does feel faster. You're just you're just maximizing the capability that the system already has, aren't you? You're not you're not doing any hard mods. You're not cutting stuff. You're just you know enhancing no, really, it. So even, that's even legit. With the GoTech, you're still limited by the the speed that the controller that's built into it can actually handle. The data. It's just not limited by the physical speed of how fast it used to be able to spin a disk out. Yeah. But do you see what I mean? It's different than um, literally cutting address lines and attaching stuff to make it better. That, that feels like you've just gone too far. A little. What are you trying to? What are you trying to get out of that system by doing all of those mods? It's never going to be even as good as a, a sort of twenty-year-old PC or ten-year-old PC. Just you know. There's a point where you just got to let it lie. It's like that old Ford Cortina, 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 and you're trying to put in like some sort of massive V8 engine, and just leave it. Let it, let it have some dignity. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Uh, I a little bit disagree with you for that. It makes me need to come out. I've got to be honest. I want a vampire for twelve on the drink. I'm going to make a thing. Let your retro. Live with dignity. <laughs> so it's like for me, I'm, for the BBC, I've got the, I've got the gadget now, but so there's more colours and things. I've got the high serial thing plugging for it, and it's got the USB and um, a compact flash card reader in it, um, so I can have all that. But then in my media, I've got a GoTech and I'm waiting for the vampire to come out. And the SD, I've got the Cosmo X in it. Um, Commodore 64. I'm waiting for the Ultimate 64 to come out. I've got that on pre order. I think for me with the Vampire, with the Amiga. I, th I think for me with the Vampire with the Amiga, it's kind of, it feels to me that it's going to be. The Amiga was cut short in what was really a promising path. And it's maybe the evolution of where it would have gone. Yeah, for that one, I can agree with you with, with that. Do you like my, I'm doing a little sketch here. I want to send Re Retro Man Cave as a competition, and I don't know if he's done the draw yet, that you can win an Atari Lynx if you send in your picture of your retro system. And I kind of want to be in that draw. <laughs> Who doesn't want an Atari Lynx? Let's not he's forget. It as well, hasn't he? He's got a better screen in it and stuff. Yeah, it's a modded one. I think that's pretty legit, don't you? I'm gonna. I'll hold yeah, that up to you. So... I can't do. There you go. So I'm just gonna take the old camera. Oh, I think we'll. Let's. I think we can put the old back office lights on now. Let your PC live with dignity. Your retro. There we go. It's turned into like a, a political statement now, hasn't it? So we, we we've got like a, a little. Uh, the vampire, though, don't, aren't they going to make their own version of it, like their own board, their own little computer that you can put in its own, like a pie? Yeah, it's you know, the, the vampire 4 is going to come out in a few different iterations. The first one is going to be that it's a standalone, so it basically replaces your Amiga gut um, to, to somewhat, and then they're going to bring out the 600 and the 500 version, which will go on as an expansion board for those machines, and then they're going to bring out the 1200 version of it. Give me an extension board. Ah, okay. Hmm. Let's see how it goes. I don't know. As you say, the, the, I think Floating Fat Man said there, there's a point where you are just emulating anyway, and you're emulating with hardware as opposed to kind of... You say you're emulating with hardware, but you're kind of not. It's, it's just layers on layers anyway. How far do you need yeah. to go with it? If you've got... If you've got um, 
fully accurate GPIO that's fully compatible with the old retro system, I think that's probably the, the best point, isn't it? That's like the calf. If you're at the point where your new, your, your sort of emulated system, you can't use any of the original peripherals or hardware, then you're not really the system anymore. So I don't know how far the vampire goes to that. Do you see what I mean? Mm. If, it, if it's just got USB ports and stuff, that's great. But if you can't connect your old turtle... Right. <laughs> My understanding is the vampire will, at least in the daughterboard or the add-on board iteration, you still use the main ports of the Amiga itself, except, of course, in the case where you want to plug HDMI, because it's a HDMI cable port. So, Electron actually saying, I would never call it emulation of FPGA, though it's just re implementation of actual log. Yeah, it's like potato, potato, though, right? If it's. Um quacks like a duck walks like a duck it's a duck right from the user's perspective it doesn't matter how it's done under the skin i agree i'd probably prefer it with an fpga because it would feel less wasteful it'd be a more efficient way of doing it um but yeah from the uh, from the perspective of the users i don't think they're going to care too much um yeah right well guys i think i'm probably going to need to go get a bit of food in me but uh, I hope at least you've had some entertainment from the old calculators. Yeah. I might put put this on a, I don't know. What do you think, Andrew? It's a, pa a patron uh, quiz or a no. tombola? I think a patron quiz. Get everyone to send in their best drawing of, the of their favourite calculator. Oh, now you're talking. That's a good one. Yes, yeah, so we'll have to do do that. I'll maybe try to design a, something in PowerPoint and a, a poster for that. We'll post that in the uh, Patreon. Um, thing is, I don't have Patreon. Uh, well, I don't know. There's got, to, there's got to be some perks for the patrons, isn't there? Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think it should be given to the people that are giving you the most free computer games in the past week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you feel you deserve this one, I can send that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you'd want it though. To be fair, I've got, I've got. Um, what, what might be more interesting? I've got actually. I might put in the box. I'll tell you what, I'll put in the box and we'll decide how we're going to do this. Every kit I've made in the back office, I've still got it on the shelf. I'll put it, them all in a box and someone can just win the entire box of kits. Yeah, like, like a giveaway. giveaway. I'll, I'll do it as a giveaway, but you need uh, you need 2,000 retweets. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't just give this away for free. You can't even get 2,000 retweets. <laughs> I go there, I can get 10 retweets. So. <laughs> Ah. So Yoshi's saying, I'm a broke college student, not about to donate loan money to others. Well, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, Yoshi, you're getting to watch this for free. <laughs> so I think I think our, our mutual contractual obligations are already met, to be honest. So I think you're right. And I think I've already sent you stuff when I've been in the US. So you're doing your quids in at this point. <laughs> And uh, what you should do, if you really want a, a good freebie, uh, buy something from DigiKey so they send you one of their rulers. It even comes with your name all over the envelope. It, it said, thank you, Dr. Armstrong. Look at that, DigiKey. Yeah. Right. All right, guys. I'm sure you've all got better plans on your uh, your Sunday to hang around here. Nope. Um, enjoy whatever you're doing. Enjoy your Sunday roasts. And um, I shall uh, see you. See you on the Discord, see you on the Twitter, and see you soon. All the best. Yeah, more videos. More videos. Actually, um, I've got like 10 videos just sitting in my scheduled thing without any dates set. I might just... Shall I drop a few later today? I'll just drop a couple later. Do it. Do it. Well, I'm, well, I'm again reinstalling Windows. Only this time it's taking three times as long. Yeah, and to, from a court to court to a court to court to court to yeah, you know this. No problem. I'll put a couple out there. Uh, floating Fat Man, thank you so much for joining the uh, stream. And I, I do like the whole Floating I Fat Man thing. I'm going to... It makes me want to watch Dune later. So I'm going to watch two films today. Today I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch Dune. And I'm going to watch Howl's uh, Moving Castle. So that's my film choice for today. All the best, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye.